right. Well, as for those of you that were here last week, you know that I was picked to be a judge at the robotics competition. 44,000 students participated this year from all around the world, for those of you who don't know about the competition. Um, this was a, founded in 1992. The competition is to help bring math, science, and engineering, uh, make it exciting. So it's, it's done like a big football game. So there's cheerleaders, there's bands, there's music and lights. It's, it's a big, big production. And I, I spoke to that last week, so I'll move on from that. But as a judge, I learned quite a bit about the kids, and I was able to watch what this whole first competition was about. It was pretty unique. What happened was they put 26 judges in a room. Half of us were from PR, which is funny because I'm actually on both sides, but half of us were from the PR side, and half were from the engineering side. I'm a double E, I'm a hardware engineer, so I was paired up with an industrial engineer. There were 70 some odd teams that were actually competing. So when we got to the room, we were informed that each set of you will only get to judge 13 robots. You will then come back into the room and debate to find out who's actually going to have the winning robot. There were several very prestigious awards from Motorola, from, sorry, way back here, um, from Motorola, from, from Industrial Design Awards. There were just a ton of very prestigious awards that we had to evaluate. So I felt cheated. I was very upset when I got to the robotics competition because I thought, well, that's not fair. If I only look at 13 of the 70 plus robots and I'm only looking at those 13, how can this possibly work? We were then informed we had nine minutes to judge each robot. Okay, so now I'm even more frustrated. I'm furious at this point. I'm like, that's just not fair. There's no way that we can possibly judge these, you know, judge these robots and do something accurately and come back and debate. So we went out there, we looked at each of the robots, and you find out really quick that out of the 13 that we had, there were only two that were good. I didn't know that. So going into it, you learn to talk to the kids, you ask the kids about their robots, you find out how they built it, about the design. Each kit is actually standard. They have the same wheels, the same motors, the same components in each of the robots. It's just a matter of how they decided to build it to meet the objectives. So we went out there and my very first team was a team from Istanbul. And this was fabulous because these kids were orphans. All of the, their parents had been killed. They lived in a, in a compound in Istanbul. This was their very first year of competing, so they were up for, in my mind, for Rookie of the Year <laughs> immediately. Uh, they were being sponsored by the team who in the past had won the most prestigious award of the competition each year. Those kids from the prestigious school, it's a prep school called Bellamy, if any of you know that one, they actually flew to Istanbul for a month to help these kids build their robot. So these kids were very excited, they were uh, very proud, uh, it's amazing to watch the transformation. These kids were very shy, the language barrier, for those of you who speak other languages. So when we'd walk up to them and try to talk to them, they, they were having a hard time with the English, but they were so excited and they, they'd beam and they were just, oh, you know, look at this, look at that, and trying to help us. And I went back to the room that time thinking, okay, I like the people. And they said, no, 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 that's not the objective. You're looking at the robots. So we had to go back out on the floor. We're actually looking at the hardware because there was a whole other team that was looking at the people. So we back out on the floor, looked at the robots, looked at the hardware. Again, it's all the same. So it was kind of, it, again, it was a difficult choice. All the robots are built with the same components. So it's just a matter of which robot would you buy. If I, and so I went out there and said, okay, for quality, which robot team would I hire? So if I was going to hire any of these kids, which team would I hire? Which team seems the most together? Which team seems like that they could actually build a robot with quality? So I went out with that objective. The second objective was to find the best industrial design. So I walked out to the floor and I said, which robot would I buy? If I was going to buy a robot, which one of these robots would I actually buy? So I go back into the room, and then the debates start. <laughs> it was wild. I've never seen anything like that. And I'm in a room with very, very prestigious people. I was in there with the Bezos Association the engineering manager from Fluke, one of the heads of Boeing. I mean, these are not people you're going to stand up and argue, and who am I? I'm, you know. <laughs> so it was very difficult. Toastmasters helped tremendously because I was able to stand up and articulate the reasons for my robots. So then what happens, it really was a fair competition because we narrow it down to, okay, this team likes this robot, this team likes that robot. You wind up with six robots. You then go back out and judge just those six. So the competition did wind up being fair in that sense, and I was very happy with that. But more about the kids. So back to the um, Inspiration Awards and the, the Rookie of the Year Awards. What the kids taught me there was gracious professionalism. I was very, very impressed. The kids would help each other. 
they would actually go out and help like the team that flew to Istanbul. They did it on their own dime, I found out. They would use their own money. Of course, they're from Bellamine Prep, so they have money. But beside, you know, they flew out, used their four weeks of vacation, helped the other team. The team from Turkey, another team had broken apart, so they gave them part of theirs after their robot was no longer in the competition. These kids were amazing. These are high school students. And the best part of the event, the very, very best part, Turkey did win, by the way. I'm very happy. And Xbox 360, for any of you who care. Um, it won last year. It won again this year. But the best part of the competition was the head of Boeing came, and he stood up, and he said, you got, now remember, there's 44,000 students participating in the overall competition. He said, kids, if you have FIRST Robotics on your resume and you finish college, I have a job for you. I promise. So that's pretty powerful. That's 44,000. He said, even in the down economy, 44,000 students, if you have FIRST on your resume and you finish college, you do have a job.